So about two years ago, I bought and reviewed the RetroTINK 5X Pro, the incredible scaler that was developed by Mike Chi. It was capable of scaling resolutions up to 1440p and offered some of the very best deinterlacing and many different inputs for all your retro needs. And you know what? I felt like it was almost everything that I actually needed. There were a couple of things that I wished were a part of the 5X Pro, but for the most part, it was something that I used as my daily driver. I used the 5X Pro simply every time I need to capture old retro gameplay almost all the time. And the Tink 5X Pro was and still is a fantastic scaler. But somehow I'm going to have to retire the 5X Pro and toss it in the drawer because all that is now replaced with the brand new Retro Tink 4K, which takes all the features of the 5X Pro and improves upon them in every single way. The RetroTINK 4K is a next generation first of its kind scaler that is capable of scaling resolutions all the way up to 4K. And of course, we are going to deep dive and take a very close look at the RetroTINK 4K and test it with a wide array of different systems and different scenarios in today's episode. But first, a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by World of Warships. So every night after work, I like to jump online and play games with my friends, and recently I've been checking out World of Warships, a free-to-play 12v12 ship combat game that's available on your PC. In the game, you get to command iconic warships which are based on historical documents and actual blueprints from the first half of the 20th century. You can also choose from destroyers, aircraft carriers or cruisers, even submarines. But my favourite is the battleship that excel in both dealing and absorbing large amounts of damage. And what I love about World of Warships is that its combat focused is slower paced and more tactical. And by working together with your teammates, you can quickly learn how to flank and take down enemy ships. And you'll never get bored because there are more than 40 unique maps in the game that feature dynamic weather and stunning water effects, with new content released every single month. Earlier this year, there was an awesome collaboration with one of my favorite metal bands of all time, Megadeth. And right now, from November 16 to November 30, there's an in-game event collaboration between World of Warships and the popular high school fleet anime series. The game also features 20 ports to choose from, with 10 of them recreated based on historical harbours and port towns. And there are a variety of game modes to choose from, so players of all types can find their favourite way to enjoy World of Warships. But it's not just on PC, World of Warships is also available on Xbox, PlayStation and even on your phone. So why not check it out for yourself? Link is in the description below. And during registration, use the promo code HSF2023 to receive a huge starter pack, including 200 doubloons, 1 million credits, seven days of premium account time, and two high school fleet commanders. Once again, a big thanks to World of Warships for sponsoring today's episode. So the RetroTINK 4K is a beast, but it doesn't come cheap at 750 US dollars, but it's easily the best scaler on the market that works with everything I've thrown at it. And I do mean everything. Of course, the price will turn some people away and that's totally understandable. But for that, I would say check out Mike Chi's other products, including the RetroTINK 2X and 5X. Definitely cheaper products, but they will get the job done. But of course, if you want the best, and I do mean the best, you have to pay for the privilege. So what exactly does $750 get you? Well, it gets you just about everything. The Tink 4K has flexible output modes, including 480p, 1080p, 1440p, and of course 4K, with various refresh rates that you can select from. You can easily create your own custom profiles and store them as presets on the included remote control. It offers fully buffered video modes, gen locked and frame locked sync modes, HDR10 output with full color correction, and the coolest part for me and something I've wanted in a scaler ever since the days of the FrameMeister is a wide array of inputs. For example, I love the RetroTINK 5X Pro, but when I want to capture HD15 or VGA sources, there's simply no way to do it. So for that, I have to use my OSSC for just that one use case. And if you've ever used an OSSC with VGA inputs, you know that you need a PhD in mathematics and science to dial in a good setting. 
The RetroTINK 4K just works with very little adjustment. Now, as an example of this, I connected up my Sharp X68000, which has difficulty with many an upscaler, and initially I had a rolling image that clearly wasn't right. But with two simple adjustments and then selecting the auto crop feature in the advanced menus, fixed it up perfectly. Now, this may not sound like a big deal, but in the days of the RetroTINK 5X, this would have been something that Mike Chi would have needed to investigate and provided a firmware update for. On the Tink 4K, you have complete control. And from here, you can simply save this to a profile on your remote control, so you'll never have to mess with it again. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Inputs, I said that there are a lot of them. You get Composite, Component, S-Video, VGA, RGB SCART, but perhaps the biggest surprise is that it has an HDMI in. But this isn't just a pass-through. It will also scale any HDMI signal with perfect integer scaling to 4K. This means that the Tink 4K isn't exclusively a retro scaler. You can connect up more modern consoles such as the Xbox 360, PlayStation Vita TV, PlayStation 3, Nintendo Switch, even an Xbox Series S if you want, just to name a few. This means crystal clean 4K output on your modern display or capture device. Bombs, not lawn sharks. Just drive, leave the funny comments to me. Now I spent a lot of hours testing this feature quite extensively and here are a few examples of the games that I captured. Over on the Xbox 360 I ran Fable Anniversary at 1080p and then the difference here at 4K and you can see that the difference is quite notable. Over on the PlayStation 3, scaling Gran Turismo 6 looks stunning at 4K and of course we had to try out Metal Gear Solid 4 and the result looks very clean and probably the best way to experience the game outside of emulation. Now another feature of the RetroTINK 4K that you will get is a remote control. Now this remote control is programmed and has all the appropriate labels to basically tell you exactly what you need to do. So this is not one of those remotes where you have to rely on guesswork to try to figure out what the buttons do. It is something that has been customized for the RetroTINK 4K experience. People who own a Nintendo Switch and are wondering if games look any better at 4K, well, judge for yourself. The VGA input is also a very welcome addition. Capturing from various VGA sources has always been tricky, especially when it comes to retro gaming PCs with a myriad of different input resolutions and frequencies. It really can become headache inducing. But I'm happy to report once again that the Tink 4K will handle all your VGA sources with relative ease. Take for example my old Windows 7 laptop from 2010. Without any modifications at all, my desktop running at 1024 by 768, as you can see, it scales beautifully. And then I took it a step further by installing Unreal Classic in both Direct3D and the N-Glide 3D effects wrapper, you can see exactly how clean the image quality is without any notable noise or artifacting. And I should also add there's a really handy auto phase button on the remote that can simply correct up the image if there are any edges that fall outside of the view. Coupled with the auto crop, you can easily dial in the perfect image without having to mess around. Playing Unreal on my old PC at 4K is something of dreams and it looks absolutely superb. Other VGA sources that I tried was my Sega Dreamcast plugged in via my VGA adapter and again, looks amazing. The Sharp X68000 I tested earlier in the episode and I've never really been able to use it in conjunction with a scaler, but all that has now changed. Another retro computer that you know that I'm a big fan of, of course, is the Commodore Amiga. Now on the RetroTINK 5X Pro, I did have some issues with it because of its 50Hz implementation. Mike Chi did later fix this in firmwares, but I always felt like the 50Hz PAL support was less than stellar. And I just resorted to my OSSE for the most part. Once again, the Tink 4K handles my Amiga with ease. This is going in via RGB SCART, and I wanted to demonstrate a few things here. 
First, the image quality. Yes, I know I keep talking about it, but it's the cleanest I've ever seen with very little noise. Amiga games come in all shapes and sizes, so the auto crop feature really does bring out the actual viewport from the game itself, and this is a fantastic feature. But the biggest surprise for me is the resolution switching. It's simply the best around. One of the tests that I always like to do is test out a game known as Agony by Psygnosis Software. The intro is interesting because when you launch the game, it switches over to the Amiga's interlace mode and then switches back to regular low resolution PAL mode. This has tripped up many an upscaler on the OSSC line doubler. The resolution switching did work, but it was awfully slow. On the Tink 5X Pro, it had a rolling image, but there was a firmware update that fixed it eventually. On the Tink 4K, it works exactly the way you expect it to. The resolution switching is extremely fast and once again, the absolute best that I've seen. Now, of course, we can't test a scaler without looking at the Sony PS1 and PS2. So let's start with the PS2. We are connected via RGB SCART using an Insurrection Industries cable. Many PS2 games run in interlace mode, and of course, if you know about the RetroTINK 5X Pro, then you probably already know about its fantastic motion adaptive D interlacer. And if you don't, let's put it this way. It's the best D interlacer I've seen hands down. And yes, the same motion adaptive D interlacing is here, which is my go-to for all things PS2 that aren't running in progressive scan. So here's Gran Turismo 4 running at 1080i with motion adaptive D interlacing enabled. The Tink 5X Pro already did a fantastic job here, but with perfect scaling to 4K, it looks even cleaner. If you own a PS2, then you're in for a real treat because this for me is really the best way to experience PlayStation 2 games on modern displays. Just check out these visuals. And of course, the PlayStation 1. My setup this time is going to be via HDMI using the PS1 Digital, the ultimate PlayStation 1 1080p HDMI mod, which we reviewed on the channel about three years ago or so, which by itself is already superb with fantastic fidelity at 1080p, and of course, combined with the Tink 4K, just makes things even better. But what about composite signals? Well, let's check it out. When I think of composite, I think of the Nintendo 64, which I would think most people use their original hardware with. Composite N64 looks fantastic by itself. But I want to let you guys know that you may see some noise on the picture here, and that is no fault of the Tink 4K. I'm using a cheap cable that has not been properly shielded, so I do apologize for that. But even still, this is a fantastic composite output. But did you know that you can make your Nintendo 64 look god tier with this cheap composite cable and a Tink 4K by simply enabling CRT filters? With a few tweaks of the advanced menu, this is what you can accomplish with a combination of CRT filters and phosphor masks. Everything here is customizable. Most CRT filters will reduce the brightness of the display, which is a known side effect. But in the advanced menus of the Tink 4K, you get a comprehensive color correction menu to dial in the exact settings that you want. And when you're happy with it, save it to a profile on your SD card and retrieve it with a click of a preset on your remote. Here's what I was able to whip up in about one minute. Now, I'm a total novice when it comes to profile and settings for various systems, but you can see how advanced this is. And the great news here is that respected members of the retro community have been working in conjunction with Mike Chi to provide some of the very best and most console optimized settings you'll ever need. So you don't even need to worry about creating your own. These are still in ongoing development and nothing short of amazing. Nintendo 64 games via a terrible composite cable with my one minute CRT mask hack job looks like this. For me, it's nothing short of transformative. But wait, there's even more. The built-in scaling engine allows you to scale your source precisely to your individual specifications. There are aspect ratio corrections and filtering modes that are adjustable. There's also a free scaling mode so you can define the exact pixel numbers that you need. You can even enable 120 hertz mode up to 1440p with its HDMI 2.0 implementation. And there's also its own built-in black frame insertion implementation with HDR10 support. Unfortunately, I don't possess the appropriate capture hardware to show off these features, but for those enthusiasts who want the absolute best from their modern HD televisions, these features are here and you should take full advantage of them. 
The remote also has fast options to switch between 4K, 1080p, 1440p, and 480p at a click of a button. Another option that I really like is the auto gain button that samples the current frame buffer and provides a smart gamma boost to the display to help with darker images. I mean, if you haven't figured it out by now, this thing has it all. Mike Chi sat down and thought of everything. Everything that I've tried to do to break the device or catch it out in an aha moment with a few tweaks of its menu is simply fixed. There are so many more systems and options I could show you, but you get the idea. The RetroSync 4K is an absolute game changer and throws down the gauntlet to other scaler makers to come close to matching it. I can't see any other scaler coming close to this, and for me, it's the only scaler that you'll ever need, no matter what your workflow is. The Tink 4K is simply god tier. Is it expensive? Yes, absolutely. Is it worth the money? Yes, absolutely. Now there is a part of the Retro Tink 4K that I do want to talk to you guys about, and that has to do with the price. The price of the Retro Tink 4K is 750 US dollars. Now that obviously is going to turn some people away. But we have to be very clear about what we're talking about here. We're talking about the absolute best in class scaler that you'll probably be able to buy ever. This is a Rolls Royce, a Mercedes Benz, a BMW, a Ferrari. This is the top of the line scaler that will handle all your needs. And this is not something that I would say is going to be useful for just the kind of the hobbyist or just a or someone that just wants to get a better image out of say their Nintendo 64. For that, you can use Mike Chi's other products including the RetroTINK 2X, which is a perfectly fine scaler for something like the N64 or something that requires a component or S video input, or even the 5X Pro, which retails at $275, which is obviously a little bit more expensive, but that does an amazing job upscaling to up to 1440p. This RetroTINK 4K has some of the most sophisticated circuitry inside, and it has been carefully crafted and built and it really is worth every penny. But I do understand that some people will not like the price, but at the end of the day, if you are an enthusiast, you are a scaling enthusiast, and you want a really great image quality, pretty much just anywhere you go, the RetroTINK 4K is the only upscaler that you will ever need. But for me, I am just uh, absolutely blown away about what this scaler can do. I think this is an absolute game changer. It brings in so many unique and interesting features to the, to the market itself. And really, all my other scalers finally can be put to rest. I don't need the OSSC, the 5X Pro, the 2X. All of those, while they do a fantastic job and still have very good use cases even in 2023, simply have been eclipsed by this baby here. But we are going to leave it here for today's episode. I do want to give once again a huge thanks to Mike Chi for sending me out a unit to take a look at on the channel. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. As always, if you like this episode, please don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye for now.